Hey everyone! Before we start, I just want to talk about Lilia's items and runes. And the first item that I would go for is Rod of Ages. Roa is a key item for Lilia because as an AP bruiser, the additional durability that it gives will make her last longer when it comes to the team fights. Ro also gives AP, mana, as well as a scaling component which allows her to deal damage as well. Then the next item that I would go for is Rabadon's Deathcap. A lot of people usually go Leandris or Riftmaker, but after testing, I would rather go for the Rabadons since it gives the most burst out of the three items. It also allows her to reach her power spike and it also has a better carrying potential overall. Third item that I would go for is the Steel Plated Stasis. You could go for the Mercury Threads if they have a lot of crowd control, but Stasis is a must for this champion. This item synergizes well with Lilia because what you could do is flash in, first skill, ulti, and before the sleep rocks, you could use your stasis. And when your stasis finishes, the opponents will be asleep, allowing you to deal a lot of damage right after. Then the next item I would go for is Rift Maker, another great item for Lilia, giving her additional HP, AP, Ability Haste, as well as Omni Vamp, making her even more sustainable in fights. After this, we would go for the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. This synergizes well with Lilia's kit. If you're able to spam your first skill on multiple opponents, they would get slowed and you would kite them even harder. This also gives additional HP and AP, making you tankier as well. Last item is a flex. It depends on the opponents. If they are AD heavy, you could go for the Crystalline Reflector, making you even more tankier. If they have a lot of Bruisers, you could go for the Leander's Torment. Or if they have a lot of AP, you could go for the Basal Mask as well. All of these items are very effective on Lilia and it's up to you on what you want to build. Going to the runes, the first rune that I would go for is Conquer. This is pretty good on Lilia because it allows her to have more AP as well as an Omni Vamp, making her even more sustainable in fights. Second rune that I would go for is Hunter Vampirism. This would give Lilia AP as well as even more Magic Vamp, increasing her overall lifesteal. In combination with the Hunter Vampirism, Conquer, Rift Maker, Roa Passive, and her first skill, this would give her a lot of overall sustain. Next rune that I would go for is Hunter Titan. Since one of Lilia's weakness would be hard crowd control, this would decrease the crowd control duration as well as giving her a bit more health. If they don't have much CC, another rune that you would go for is Conditioning, making her more tanky even when we get to the later stages of the game. Last rune that we go for is Hunter Genius because you would want the additional ability haste so that you would be able to spam your skills even more. An alternative for this would be the Pathfinder but I don't find this as necessary since she already has a lot of move speed and she doesn't run out of mana as easily because of the Roa. Overall, I would go for the Hunter Genius because Lilia needs a lot of cooldown reduction. And that is it for Lilia's item and runes and I will see you guys in game. Going into the game, I'm going to be showing you the potential of Lilia Jungle. In this matchup, we're currently up against Lee Sin, and in a Lilia vs Lee Sin, this is hugely advantageous towards a Lee Sin player due to his strong early game while Lilia's early game is really weak. But when we get to the later stages, Lilia would be advantageous because we would be easily able to outscale our counterpart. What we need to do is try to farm as much as possible and try to safely transition into the later stages of the game. Here I place a control ward to prevent ganks and the start that I'm doing here is the full clear starting with the blue buff. One trick with Lilia is that you could do blue and grump at the same time because of her huge range on her first skill. But be careful since her HP will be really low after finishing the double camps. Starting them both at the same time will allow her to make her clear a lot faster as compared to regular junglers. But as you could see, my HP is literally 1 and if I didn't... If my smite was a bit late, I would have died at level 1, which is really bad. With that, I'm able to clear the camps and I would get my HP back when it when I get to the Raptor camps. Unfortunately, Aatrox dies level 1 and as you could see, Lee Sin is trying to look for a gank. And since I was able to do the double camps, he would not be able to reach any of my blue side camps. I'm able to safely go to the red side and... I just want to continue my full clear and since Lee Sin knows that he has the advantage in the early matchup, he is trying to look for me in the jungle. Another trick here is when the camp is dying, you would be able to start the next camp and use your first plus second skill to be able to do a mini double camp clear. 
for now, I don't know where Lee Sin is. And after clearing the, clearing the Krugs, I would want to go for the Scuttle. But Lee Sin is trying to invade me in the Golems. And I immediately flash because I don't have enough damage to be able to handle him 1v1. Galio is able to arrive on time, gets a good taunt, plus knock up. I try to help, but since I'm quite low and I don't have much mana, I don't want to overcommit because I could easily get punished if they go for a flash onto me. The next thing that I'm doing here right now is trying to look for a scuttler to get so I can get my level 5. Gragas gets a great room, takes down the Lee Sin, which allows me to be able to get the scuttle pretty easily, but... Yone is able to take down the Galio, so I have to help my teammates. Gragas is really low, and as soon as I reach level 5, ulti plus second skill, Gragas with a great cask for follow-up, allowing us to get a lot of kills. Varus is able to flash as well, and props to Gragas for doing that great room. We're able to get 3 kills overall, giving us an advantage in the game. It's also important that we're able to delay Lee Sin, and we're able to scale properly so that we could transition well when it comes to the later stages of the game. Here, what I do here, ah, the thing that I want to do here as much as possible is to full clear my camps so that I would be able to get my core items faster, especially with the Rod of Ages. Because Rod of Ages is a scaling item, you would want to get this as soon as possible so that you could stack the additional uh, stats. Lee Sin does another invade, so what he really wants to do is to deny me from being able to farm properly. He's able to get my blue, which is a good job for him. Galio gets caught. He's able to ulti out, but it's not far enough, and the opponents are able to catch him off guard. So the opponents are doing well, even though they are a bit behind early. They still are trying to apply as much pressure as they can because they know that I can't do much early game. Lilia's Power Spike will be at 2 items once I'm able to complete my Rabadons and be able to stock my Rod of Ages properly. So while I'm not yet at that point, I would need to farm as much as possible and Lilia's Clear is quite fast as compared to the average junglers because of her ability to be able to double clear camps. With the objective spawning in 40 seconds, I look at the map for any possible ganks. I see that their Fiora is a bit overextended. So instead of going for the Krugs, I try to go for her, but she's able to know that my gank is there. So I have to go away and go back to my camps. Lee Sin does another gank top, tries to take down our duo bot. They're able to get a great gank and we're a bit behind in the early stages of the game. Since I know that Lee Sin is in the top side, I immediately go for his bot side camps and try to steal his blue buff. Since he was able to steal my blue buff earlier, I go and steal his and I have to flash because Yone and Fiora are chasing me. But I think it's worth it because I'm able to trade my flash for two of their ultimates. In the dragon fight, Yone and Fiora would have no ulti. And what you want to do here is try to stack your passive as much as possible and try to hit as much targets with your first skill. Fiora is a bit low. What I'm a bit low as well. So what I need to do here is try to play a bit safe. Just use my second skill to sustain plus poke them a bit. Lee Sin gets a great Q onto me. I flash the dra I smite the dragon for the additional sustain, but it's not enough. And I go down, get my first death. But overall, I think we're able to win the fight. Especially since I know that their Fiora and Yoned don't have their ultimates ready yet. Once I spawn, I buy my boots. I decide whether I should go for the Dragon or Herald. I think that I could possibly go for the Dragon. I just need to wait for my team to position themselves. And while, uh, going, while waiting for the Dragon, I clear my camps. I don't want to start the Dragon because... I know that we will lose the team fight if I start it. So what I'm doing is trying to wait for my team, uh, trying to wait for the opponents rather to start it themselves. And once we're in position, I go and start the objective. It, this is a bit risky, and I see Rakan trying to go for me. Misses the second skill. We burn Rakan's ultimate. Yone is able to get a knock up. Misses the ulti. And what I'm doing is trying to kite the opponents as much as possible. 
kite using my first skill and since the opponents are not able to utilize their ultimates properly we will easily win the team fight i think this is a one for four exchange plus a dragon for our team so this is a huge win yone tries to be a get greedy i used my ultimate but i'm not sure why the sleep didn't proc i think my passive woke him up or something Un a bit unfortunate but we're still able to get the lead Yona plays a bit greedy, great stasis by Gragas, and we get another kill. One tip that I will give you is to always stack Lilia's passive. In order to do this, every ability that hits grants her a stack, increasing her move speed with a maximum of 4 stacks. This is really important because Lilia's greatest strength is her mobility and having a lot of move speed would allow her to kite the opponents as well as dodge skill shots. What's happening now is that I'm forced to give Herald because I'm not in the position, but it's okay since I'm able to get a lot of gold overall. After clearing the red buff, I try and look for a gank bot. Aatrox and Fiora are fighting each other. Good play. Getting a solo kill. Lee Sin comes up, so I have to help my teammate. Lee Sin gets a great kick, but I have my third skill for the flow, slow. Flash in and use my first in order to secure the kill. This is really good because looking at the map, their duo lane is at the mid lane, mid side. Their Yon is at the top. With this position, no one is defending bot and we're able to get the first tower even though the opponents have Rift Herald. With the recall, I now have my Rabadon and this is the first power spike onto Lilia, giving me a lot more damage in the next team fights. I try to use my third skill just in case and Another th one thing about Lilia's third, third skill is that you could combine this with her ultimate. Her ultimate has no range and it is something that you could even cast uh, half the map. Another fight happens topside. My team just disengages which is really good because as much as possible I would want to camp. I would want to clear my camps before doing anything else in the map. We go mid lane. Varus, uh, Gragas gets a great ultimate, forces Varus' flash, and with this, we get a free tower. Even though the opponents are able to take three top side, this is uh, advantageous for us because mid tower is more important than the top tower. Aatrox gets another solo kill bot side, and this gives me confidence because I know that my Baron lane is doing well in the game. What I do here is try to clear mid side, look for any possible rooms. Galio gets taken down, three of their members are up. I use my third skill to check if there's any opponents in the side. First skill to face check the bush and I decide to not pursue because the opponents have a lot of burst. If Rakan's second skill hits me, combining with Lee Sin's combo, then I would instantly die which is not good for us. So instead, I just go home and buy my Zonyas which will make me really strong in the next team fight. Combining flash first skill ultimate, then stasis. Then once my stasis finishes, then I would have addition my skills would be up and I could deal even more damage. So that's the best combo if you want to use your stasis properly. Rakan looking for the face check, immediately punished with a third skill, first skill plus second skill, and look at the burst that I could give once I'm able to complete my Rabadons. With this, I try to go for an invade, but as soon as I see Varus. I decide to step away. Lee Sin is able to get the blue buff. Gragas goes in with the body slam flash. And since Varus has no more flash from earlier, we're able to punish the opponents. Looking at the top side, I see that Gra Galio and Yone are both fighting each other. For fortunately, Galio wins the fight. And this would give us a free tower. Kai's is able to take down the tower bid as well. And based on the state of the game, we're pretty strong and we might be able to snowball this even further what we want to do now is wait for the next objective which is spawning in 15 seconds we're pretty strong i have my flash i have my stasis and a lot of skills they're trying to chase down aatrox i use my first skill able to sleep the fiora unfortunately aatrox falls down but we're able to trade him one for one with the rift herald up I look at the opponent's position and I see that Varus is at the top side. 
this would signal that the opponents might be giving up the Herald for free because they're outnumbered. And I see that Lee Sin is going to the Dragon, immediately ping the, the objective since I see that they're at the top side. But since the opponent's numbers are lacking, they're not able to start the Dragon on time. What I do here instead is try to chase down Dayone, third skill for the slow, and first skill for the execute. When using your first skill, you would want to hit the outer ring as much as possible because it deals double damage. That's why I'm always spacing back and look, if my outer ring hits, we're able to burst the virus and this shows the power of the Rabadon's death cap, giving us a huge power spike as compared to the early game. Galio gets a great E plus flash, but Lee Sin is able to escape. It's okay because we're able to take down the mid inhibitor, which is huge for us. I cancel my TP just in case Lee Sin might be able to catch me there, and I don't want to give any unnecessary death. Dragon is up. I'm deciding whether I should start the dragon or go for the reset. In the end, I just go for the dragon since we're quite ahead in the game. There's fruits in the side. Lee Sin is there to try and steal, but I have my first skill plus might in order to secure the objective pretty easily. Lilia's e execute is quite strong, especially if you have more items. With the Rift Maker, this would increase my overall sustain and damage, and this would favor me the longer the team fight goes. That's why Rift Maker is a good third item, giving me all the stats that I need. With the camp spawning, I go for another double clear, and Lilia's pretty good with this. Looking at the speed, I'm able to clear my camps pretty fast, and another thing that's good about Lilia is that she's also able to clear the minion waves pretty quickly. What I do here is I try to go for two camps before going for my team. This is a bit risky, I place a ward in the bush just in case, and I see Lee Sin. I try to escape with the, all of the move speed that I have, use my ultimate, but... I'm out of position, Lee Sin's able to kick me, we take him down, unfortunately we, we get taken down as well, but my team is here to the rescue, we're able to get a 2 for 2 exchange, which is not the best, but at least we get some kills in exchange. Rakan does another second skill, but he has no follow up, Kaisa with a great ultimate inside, getting a lot of free kills, and overall we're able to win the fight, I think everyone is ahead right now and the only thing that we need is to take Baron so that we could end the game. Looking at the inventory, I have my Rylai as my fourth item because Rylai not only makes me more tankier, it also gives a slow which allows me to kite or chase down the opponents much more easily. So every first skill or even the third skill that hits would grant an additional slow which is very, very good, especially if I'm able to hit multiple targets. What I'm doing now is trying to take my camps again. Red buff is up. My teammates are quite confident, and they go for the recall. I ping Baron, go for a deep ward just in case they go for the contest. I see that Lee Sin is trying to push bot. Pretty confident that I can handle him right now. I outscale, even though we're at the same level. Look at the combo that I do. First skill ulti, second skill, then first skill again, and we instantly burst down Lee Sin. Not only is Lilia a DPS champion, she also has the potential to become a burst champion with all of the damage that I'm doing. I try to limit us a bit out of position. I miss, I miss my flash first skill, but this opens up Baron because their jungler is currently down. Lilia's Baron is decent. If I had Leandris, the only advantage of Leandris is that her objective takings will be a bit faster, but overall, I'd rather get the Rabadon for the raw damage that it provides. After taking the Baron, their blue buff is up. I decide and take it. Then the next thing that I do is I try to look for a catch. I don't want to overchase because Rakan and Varus has a lot of crowd control. One of Lilia's Main weakness is hard CC because this will allow her not this, because she would not be able to kite if she gets stunned or snared. Virus ultimate hits. Great ultimate by Galio. Yone goes in with the ultimate. 
immediately burst the Rakan with the passive. Their tower is down. Kaisa goes in, and this will most likely be the finishing touches. Their nexus is exposed, and that is it. GG's. Really great play overall. We're able to deny Lee Sin's invades and hang on in order to scale properly. We get the victory. We played well overall. 77.77% on Challenger. Unfortunately, we don't get MVP. I think Gragas deserves it because of the early game that he did and a lot of good engages. We did a lot of damage. 12, 2, and 3. Not bad. And I hope you guys enjoyed our Lilia gameplay tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Ciao, ciao.